Welcome to another technical video. This time we're going to talk about smart rate and what you can do with smart rate. We're even going to show you a demonstration of smart rate. My name is Dobias van Ingen. So let's first a little bit dive into smart rate and what is the advantage of smart rate. If you go into a lot of new networking infrastructures, you see infrastructures that have wireless or mobile technologies as the main technology. What it brings into the infrastructure is a lot of access points and a lot of access points will be connected to your access switches. This means that your access switches will become the aggregation layer for all the access points. So therefore, we need to rethink uh, what we do about that access layer and how we can do innovation. One of the things that came out with is smart rate. And think about your cabling infrastructure. Uh, the service life cycle of a cabling infrastructure on average is about 10 to 15 years. And that makes sense because the high to replace all the cable the cost to replace all the cables is pretty high. So it makes sense that there is a longer life cycle. And what you also tend to see is that this life cycle is fine to also do higher speeds on top of these cabling infrastructures. So why would you change it, right? Network infrastructure life cycles or switch components, wireless components is most of the time somewhere between five and seven years. So what if we now quickly replace a lot of these access points because we need higher bandwidth, that means we, and we don't want to replace our cabling. And this is exactly where smart rate comes into place. So what you can see on the, on the current, on the, on the screen right now is, is you have cable types and reach support and a particular certain mode. So with smart rate, you can get speeds up to one, 2.5, 5 gig, and 10 gigabit. It, some speeds depend a little bit on the cabling and the distance you can achieve. So let's have a little bit of a look. So, of course, 1 gig on category 5E class D cable or better, you can get up a link speed of 100 meter. 2.5 gig on the same cable, cat 5E class D or better, you can also reach 100 meter with smart rate. So that means already that on the same cable, on the same distance, you already have a 2.5 gigabit connection, which is a great increase. Then on 5 gigabit, you need to be a little bit careful because if you have a category 5E class D cable, then if you have a high alien nose environment, you can get up to, up to distances of 55 meters. If you have a low alien noise environment, then you can still get up to a speed of one or to a distance of 100 meter. If you have a shielded Cat 5E class D or cable, then you can also get to a 5 gig 100 meter distance. If you have a 6 category 6 class E or better cable for 5 gigabit mode, you can also get up to 100 meter. So this is already a great increase of speed on still traditional your normal cabling. On a 10 gigabit, uh, there is no support for category 5E cable, so you have category 6, class E, up to 55 meters distance for 10 gig mode, and category 6A, class EA, up to 100 meters. So you can see immediately the advantage in this table that you have long distances and high, and high bandwidth on the same cable, which give you an increase either from a switch to switch connection or from a switch to access point connection, depending a little bit for now or for the future. So, so that's nice. The other nice thing is what, uh, uh, what's, what Smart Rate is also supporting. Smart Rate is also supporting PoE Plus. So besides you can get better bandwidth, you also can power the uh, access points automatically. And besides PoE Plus, it also supports MaxSec. And MaxSec is another video that will be made by Dick Van Oeveren on this channel, um, so that you will see later coming. So you can encrypt uh, with with MaxSec. You can encrypt the traffic. With so with Smart Rate, you can you can gain higher bandwidth. With MaxSec, you can encrypt the traffic, and with PoE Plus, you can even power up. So I think these three things are really nice. So how does Smart Rate know how to connect to a port and and what kind of speed. And that's something they call rate adoption. So it is more like you start with the highest and you downshift to the lowest. So let's have a little bit of a look how it works. One important thing I want to make, if that's a question I get a lot, is that does smart rate only work 
with smart rate ports. No, smart rate also works with ports that are non smart rate ports, but then it will drop, for example, to one gigabit. So I will show this in a demonstration. So how smart rate work and how does it know on which um, on which speed to connect? So the first step here is that two ports will exchange um, advertised capabilities during the auto negotiation process. Then the second step will be the two ports attempt to link at the highest common denominator speed. So that's important. So the the port will always try to achieve the highest possible speed between the links. Then the third step is if link training passes, the link will be established. If it failed, it will go back to one to start another attempt. Then it is an important step. Every common denominator speed will have four link attempts. So the port will remove the highest common denominator speed from being advertised in subsequent link at attempt. So if it tries four times a certain speed, it will it will move to the, a lower speed and then try four times that particular speed. So that's why you see step five, repeat step one to four. This effectively starts another up to four attempts to the link at the next highest common denominator speed. Then when a link is passes, it will uh, it will will uh, will establish the link. So in order to visualize this a little bit, as we have an example here, you can see the highest common denominator uh, in this particular case is uh, five gig. Um, <clears throat> what it will see is that the four t four attempts in this example will fill the the link training at five gig. Then it will mo remove to the next high common denominator, and that's two point four two point five gig. And you can see that it, it fills once and then at link attempt six it passes and then the link will be established. So I hope that's all clear. So let's dive quickly into the demonstration. What you can <clears throat> what we what we have here is we have two 3810M switches, and the 3810M switches we have is supporting eight smart rate ports. And we will using two ports to connect to the links. So there is no link connected. So let's first have a have a look at the command show interface then we're using port 2 and what you can see here is that you can now have smart rate if you do the smart rate on a port that doesn't support smart rate you will get an error but now we are using a port so let's see there's not a lot of information yet we only see some physical information about model chipsets and some freeware okay so now let's connect the port to the uh, let's connect the cable to the other uh, to the other switch also on port 2 and link is in the switch <clears throat> okay you can see that we already have more information here and let's break this information a little bit down in order to understand what we see first part we already discussed physical information model chipset firmware the second part and this is important signal to noise ratio and some CRC8 errors, LDPC. So from here to here, that's one block. This is the physical block, and this is the block that provides you information about the link health. As you can see, you see signal to noise ratio, CRC8 errors, and LDPC errors. So the important information to know is that this CRC8 and LDPC errors is done in the fire of the chip. And every time you do a show interface, the interface in smart rate, it more or less these errors start at zero and it reads it out again. So sometimes it could be that you have a higher number, sometimes it could be that you have a lower number. What is important to know is that if you have, you can see I have only some LDPC1 numbers at one iteration. Um, but we don't have LDPC errors. So that is important and we don't have CRC8 errors. So we have a pretty, pretty healthy link here. You start to see errors if your link health goes down. Then if we go to the next step here is this particular part. You can see information about the retrains request, about the accumulated time spent in fast retrain, uh, some information about link recovery, etc. This 
is all information about noise in the link and all information uh, this assesses information about the alien noise and you remember that on category 5e if you want to connect on 5 gig and you have a high alien noise you will see uh, the connection up to a distance of 55 meters so this information here assesses information about alien noise then we go down and you can see the last part here is very okay oh the established speed is 10 gigabit it took us two attempts to establish the links and remember after four attempts we drop down to the next highest common denominator so you can see exactly how many attempts it took then uh, uptime till the links was uh, last established and you can see the advertised ports of this local switch so this switch is uh, advertising 1 2.5 5 and 10 gig but you can also see the advertisement speed of our other side so our partner and that's also advertised and you can also see the link match the partner matching vendor so in this particular case the other side also supporting smart rate so let's see if we can uh, bring the link down because now we have it on one gig then we go into configuration we go into interface 2 and with speed duplex let me do this and let me explain it a little bit so we now have auto negotiation but here it starts to get interesting because you can set a specific speed that you advertise to the other side so if I do auto 2500 for example I advertise my link parameters that I can support 2500 so 2.5 gig if I do for example this one I'm advertising 1 2.5 and 5 gig so meaning if you think about the rate adoption start at 5 if it fills 4 attempts we drop to 2.5 so this time you are uh, out of negation up to 5 gig so let's set a speed duplex auto 2.5 for example and not 2.5 500 but 2.5 just to see what will happening then we do interface uh, to smart rate and you can see that we have a new link established at 2.5 gig uh, but this is the only link speed we are advertising because the other ones are set to no so if I do this speed duplex now on auto uh, to 500 for example up to 5 and we do the show interface command again so it has re-established the link now you can see that we have 5 gig we are advertising 2.5 and 5 gig so you see immediately see that the rate adoption is working and you also see that the speed duplex is working correctly I want to show you one last thing before I end this video is let me connect to a, just a normal gigabit port I'm connecting out to a normal gigabit port it's re-establishing the link give it a couple of seconds sorry I need to configure this port to speed duplex auto and that's it and then I can use a smart rate port again okay there you can see um, I have an established port but you don't see the signal to noise ratio you don't see the LPDC errors we have a link speed of 1 gig because we are supporting everything but the other spider is only supporting uh, 1 gig and you can see the no at the link partner matching vendor so that means we have a traditional one gig port connected to a smart rate port that is supported okay this ends my uh, my demonstration and a little bit of explanation about smart rate I think it is a very useful technology maybe you don't see the bandwidth need but at least for switch to switch connections you can use it because you can also use Maxec and for access points that will gain more um, if you buy new switches right now and you need access points uh, that have higher bandwidth potentially in the future which has a and you can't constantly rip and you place with cabling this is definitely a good technology to have thank you very much if there's any questions leave them in the uh, in the note section and, and I will try to answer them as fast as possible if you like this video and you want to see more please like the video uh, share it and have some comments thank you very much and um, bye bye